Welcome to the Human Rights Roundtable, deep dives into the work of the Human Rights Task Force. I'm your co-host, Melinda Garfield, and co-chair of the Westwood Human Rights Task Force. And I'm Danielle Sutton. I am the director of the Towns Youth and Family Services Department and co-chair of the Human Rights Task Force. And we are happy that you joined us today. Uh, each episode, we will have um, guests from either the Human Rights Task Force members, um, municipal employees, uh, residents of the town. Um, and the purpose, Danielle, is? Well, we're just hoping with this podcast that we can take deeper dives uh, into these topics. You know, we're meeting for an hour and a half each month as a part of the task force, and then obviously doing some work in communication in between. But we really don't have the opportunity to sit with different individuals and talk at length. And so we're hoping that with this podcast, we can do that in a way that brings information and clarity to the people in the community. And we also really want to get more um, resident uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. So um, we look forward to creating some uh, social media polls, uh, ways to get in touch with us so that we can um, continue the dialogue uh, within the town and not just within the uh, task force itself. So why don't we start? Um, um, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, again, my name is Melinda Garfield, and I am the executive director of Westwood Media Center. Um, I have been for the last six and a half years, um, and I'm also a resident of Westwood. Um, I, my family and I moved here in 2018, and um, we're in the Sheehan School District, and um, I've enjoyed meeting new neighbors and um, being a part of the community and taking uh, part in different community events, um, not just for work, but um, for pleasure as well. And um, I believe it was town meeting of 2020, what proudly, yeah. when um, I was discussing, um, you know, what was happening within the country, the community, mm -hmm. um, with the town administrator, Chris Coleman, um, and just feeling this like level of concern for what was going on. Um, just in general, um, it just feels, uh, it, it just feels, I, I can't even put it into words. Like, um, I just feel anxious about the, <laughs> about what's going on in the world. Um, especially, yeah. and I still do, but like definitely then when there were less conversations going on about it. Um, and we were, I was kind of commiserating with him and, um, you know, he had come to the conclusion that maybe a human rights task force was um, something that should be created. Um, and he's a man of his word and uh, he did. And, um, you know, he reached out to me and asked if I would be uh, a, a member of that uh, task force. Um, and of course I said yes, and um, that's, that's how it all began. Um, and I'm gonna kick it over to Danielle, and you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I came to Westwood back in the day, back in 2004, as a member of the staff of the Youth and Family Services Department. So I think that we're coming up on 18 years uh, this summer, which is a long time. I'm not a resident of Westwood, um, but have you know spent a long time here in this role, working with the youth and families of Westwood, and you know working with different town departments on different issues. So, and you know, it, we found this now that we've been doing this work, right, Melinda? We found that some other communities have taken the same um, pathway of looking to their youth and family services departments if they have them. Those are typically staffed by um, psychologists or social workers. I'm a social worker by trade and by license. So it, that's a kind of natural fit. Social work has that connection to social justice. So I wasn't surprised when Chris came to me um, in the spring of 2021 I think was it 2021 I think by the time we were having we were having conversations but by the time he kind of right. came and said you know what I'm forming this task force yes. like I want you to be on it um we were heading into the spring of 2021 uh, mm -hmm. that was because we had our kickoff meeting last March mm -hmm. um so he came and just said you know looking to bring together this task force in your role as youth and family services director and with your social work background I'd like to um you know bring you in in the role of co-chair and that with another co-chair uh, who's a resident uh, to be named. So I feel really, you know, lucky and grateful and proud to be a part of the task force and to be in the co-chair role, um, especially as somebody who 
is living a lot of my life in Westwood and really uh, loving the community of Westwood for all these years, but I'm not a resident. So mm -hmm. that's always a part of the lens, you know, through sure. which we're having these discussions is um, I come to the table as somebody who is serving the town of Westwood, um, but not residing in the town Can of Westwood. Can you um, walk us through... Um, when you first started, there was actually a human rights task force commission, right? That's right. So, you know, we could spend a whole um, about a bunch of time uh, talking about this, but back, back in the day, and I'd have to look to find the year, but the, it started in Westwood as Westwood No Place for Hate, which was actually a templated program through the Anti-Defamation League that any community in the Commonwealth maybe outside of the Commonwealth too, I'm not sure, but definitely within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a town could kind of follow these steps and become an official no place for hate community. So that is what Westwood was doing um, years and years ago. I wanna say it was probably pre-2010, like or right around that time. And so from that place of being an um, ADL no place for hate community and having that designation, um, the town moved into becoming, uh, to having a group that was called the Westwood uh, Human Rights Committee. And that the reason for that is actually a whole other like topic, which was really interesting. There is a large Armenian population in Westwood, and they were very concerned with the affiliation at the time with the Anti-Defamation League, because at the time, the Anti-Defamation League's um, head was calling what had happened in Armenia um, tantamount to genocide, mm -hmm. but would not call it genocide. So a lot of uh, folks in the Westwood community of Armenian descent felt very passionately that if we were really committed to these ideals around um, you know, inclusion and celebrating diversity and celebrating different cultures, we needed to move away from that affiliation with the ADL and move into our own health group. So through conversation with the ADL, and the conversation on the town side, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So there became the Westwood Human Rights Committee, and that was a um, formed committee that included like a select board member, a town administrator, um, folks from the school side. It did not have any um, residents um, other than people who happened to work for the town or have leadership positions in houses of worship or um, in other places. So I was got to be a part of that group, which was amazing. Um, and but it functioned a bit differently than our task force okay. in that it had to follow the open meeting laws. Yep. So things around how we met and agendas and, um, you know, public portions of things. And so I know that when Chris formed this task force, so the committee still kind of exists on paper, but went dormant many years ago. Um, when Chris looked at forming this task force, he was looking for something that could be more agile, that could actually like form and solve problems without having to um, follow all of the traditional protocol of a town committee. What were some of the um, activities or um general responsibilities even sure. of that first com uh, committee right. that was formed. That Westwood, the Westwood HRC back in the day. So that was really kind of what we would think of as basic celebratory events. So it was doing things like planning, um, you know, a steel drum event where a group came and did a steel drum performance, like, and talked about, um, you know, some different parts of that music and the culture from which they came from. And people, you know, came and had a party around that, right? And, and there was fundraising involved in that. It also looked like um, putting out a brochure in the town where the members of the Westwood HRC were, um, you know, there in a group photo. And we kind of talked about the tenants. It also looked, um, in its first formation, when, you, when we started off as a no place for hate community, there was signage around the community. So when you entered Westwood from different places, it would say, welcome to Westwood, a no place for hate community. And that carried, you know, um, that meant certain things. Sure. So it was kind of doing things like that. It was a lot of discussion, but not, there weren't, things like trainings or um, you know, looking for grants or doing that kind of thing. It was really about looking around Westwood and saying, what different cultures do we have here and how can we celebrate them? So in your opinion, mm. why do you think it died out? Yeah, and I'm realizing as you said that, that I misspoke earlier when I said there weren't residents, there were residents okay. on it. Um, and the idea was that this would become more resident driven 
like at the time. So I believe that it kind of went dormant because as people, as residents rolled off in kind of a natural way, you know, to uh, do other things in the community, there weren't residents in place to fill those roles. So it ended up being um, mostly employees and not uh, residents. And, and it was at that point that people just moved in a different direction. Um, I've heard yeah. uh, people in the community say, you know, why would a place like Westwood mm. need a human rights task force? Right. And usually my response is because whether or not you are in any of the, um, you know, whatever makes you diverse mm -hmm. um, might not be as overt as a lot of other people um, and that we have a lot of, whether you, you notice it or not, whether it's in your inner circle or not, there are, uh, you know, a lot of different types of people in town sure. um, that need to be, uh, you know, recognized and um, to make sure that we're giving, um, you know, equal rights <laughs> and um, recognition and, um, and services and whatnot. Um, what would you say if someone had asked, had said to you, why do you yeah. think we need this? I mean, that question, you get it in different ways, being um, in a department that focuses on mental health, right? We've had people ask us that about, you know, why do we need a, a department um, that focuses on mental health in Westwood? Why do we need programs like holiday giving, where we help people in need? Why do we need a food pantry, right? Like, so these are questions that come up, because when you look around, you might not see the need for those resources in your everyday life. But we know, as people providing them, that it certainly exists in Westwood, as it does in any community. So when people ask that question, why does Westwood need a human rights task force? I would say because every community needs a group that is looking at how human rights are being handled and how things like equity and inclusion are being handled even if it's just to say, we're doing a great job <laughs> in, in our community, how can we continue to grow and develop? It's the same you know, reason why we have so many groups. You know, like, I'm just gonna make it up, but it's like, you know, why do you have a group around um, you know, zoning or mm -hmm. planning or anything like that? You have it to make sure that you're maintaining like, what you have and that you're growing in appropriate ways mm -hmm. and that if there are any issues, they're dealt with so that they don't become larger issues down the road. And right. I, I think a task force is exactly that same thing. Like you need to constantly, any community, be looking and saying what's going well, mm -hmm. where are we meeting the needs of the community, and where are we not, and how can we address these things and be preventative rather than reactive, proactive right. rather than reactive, right? Um, I also have heard a lot of questions around how did we, um, get chosen mm. for the task force. Mm -hmm. So as I stated, you know, Chris Coleman and I had had a conversation about it and he had asked me as he had asked you right. um, within your role, you know, uh, as an employee of the town. Mm -hmm. um, but just to clarify, you know, um, when there was the initial group of us that mm -hmm. had started, those were all appointed by Chris, right? That's right. And so, you know, those discussions, those early discussions before he made his official appointments and before we kind of came together um, were really about let's try to get a cross section of the Westwood community so that we can hear from people who, one, want to be hurt, like want to be a part of this. So that was like the number one criteria. Like you, you are, have demonstrated an interest <laughs> in being a part of something like this. Uh, and number two was you bring something to the table that's going to enrich the discussions and that's going to bring perspective, right? So in my role, it was because I work with youth and families and because I have... Um, an eye towards social justice in that capacity, right? For somebody else, it might be like, and you know, we could go through all of our members, but each member that was part of that original group and that is a member now are people who expressed an interest, who came with um, one or more roles in the community that meant that they could speak to the experiences of groups in the community. Right. And do I you, think, oh, God. Do you believe that there's room for more on our task force? Yeah, I mean, so we started off with this, you know, anytime you're forming a group and you want that group to be functional, you're thinking like, how small or big does this group need to be, right? Like you're thinking about size and you're thinking about composition. So I think that those were um, 
you know, this original thing of like, well, we don't want to start off too big and be, feel unwieldy. Mm -hmm. We don't want to start off too small because we want to try to get as many perspectives and voices as possible around the table. And then, um, so I think that original group was nine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from that group, we kind of realized as we started our group formation and started to get together and thought about, you know, I think we, we could have hundreds of people on this task force <laughs> if we really wanted to try to get the voices um, of everyone in, in the community. But we, I think we realized, like, you know what, we can be bigger than nine, like, to mm -hmm. try to incorporate more voices um, and perspectives. And now we're at 14. Um, and I think we do have room where mm -hmm. we could add more people and we'd welcome that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, um, you know, we've, we haven't found any issues with our ability to function mm -hmm. uh, going from nine to 14. And again, with that growth from nine to 14, it was really people who expressed an interest and had a different perspective to bring. Right. Um, and as you know, you and I have to, uh, have we, as we've discussed with others in the community um, or given presentations in front of other groups, mm. um, you know, we've discussed that, like, we started in March, we had our initial kickoff, um, we had to create our group norms, yep. um, which is, for those who aren't familiar, are, um, like, a set of, you know, rules or procedures that you can just, like, look over again and know, you know, um, that this is a safe space and um, just to remind yourself how to conduct yourself within the group. Absolutely, um, yeah. Things that keep sensitive discussions, kind of give you some parameters because right. you know you're going to be talking about having sensitive discussions, right. so how to conduct yourself in those. Um, so we worked on those a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then the first thing we tackled was what is the community doing right? Mm -hmm. um, and for when we do tell people that, I feel like, Sometimes we get, you know, some some opinions that like, well, why would you start there, right? Yeah. And do you want to just like kind of oh, give yeah. your opinion? I'm like, why would we have started there? I can talk about strengths-based perspective <laughs> all day. So that is, I mean, it's a tenant of social work, right? It's a tenant of um, a lot of therapy, actually, right? It, and it is, I've found over the years, good practice when you're bringing together a task force to look at work that needs to be done, right? So starting off with your strengths and starting off with what's going well gives you a foundation from which to work because you're going to leverage your strengths, the things that you're doing well, to tackle the unmet needs and the things that are challenging. And that goes for individuals and it certainly goes for communities. And so that felt like the right place to start with this group. I think too, just from like a kind of human dynamic place, like starting off recognizing that like work has already been done before we showed up on the scene, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like and acknowledging that and starting from that place of like, we're not starting from zero here. Like good things have been happening and are happening. And starting from that place I think is motivating mm -hmm. um, because you think, okay, yeah, like I'm not just starting from square one here um, and having to come up with the answers to all of this. People have come before me and I can use their experience and their best practice to move forward. And I think, you know, not to jump off that track, but I think our group is really working hard to make sure we're knowing and looking at those things from Westwood, but also looking to see what comparable communities have done in their best practices. So I think it's all about just knowing uh, what's going right before you start tackling what's not. Right. And then either, uh, you know, simultaneously slash like shortly thereafter, um, maybe kind of like in the summer, mm -hmm. I would say, we started doing that comparison between other towns um, mm -hmm. and how other task forces or commissions, um, even, you know, we found, I think, that a lot of other towns also have a DEI director, yeah. officer. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, you know, we're doing our research, basically. Um, it doesn't It doesn't live in a centralized location <laughs> on no. the state website. <laughs> it's funny that you say that, Melinda, because we just, um, what, it, just a couple days ago, we um, had a uh, word from MAPC, which mm -hmm. I think it's the Massachusetts Planning Coalition or something to that effect. I'm, oh, I'm never great with uh, names and letters, but it is a group that is actually looking at, they, they look to help all of the communities uh, in the Commonwealth kind of learn from each other. 
for whatever they're planning, but in, they are specifically having a group of employees there look at what towns are doing around this DEI work and this human rights work. So because they're recognizing that more and more communities are saying, hey, what's everybody else doing? They're doing what we're doing. Right. So they're like, oh, we see you doing that. We're gonna try to get this all together. Um, so they're doing focus groups from different communities and compiling that information to share out, which is great. Great. Yep. Um, so then after, I would say right around the beginning of fall, mm -hmm. like September, October time, um, we introduced a few new members as well as, you know, we started to um, hack away at some of the unmet needs, as, sure. as we call them, mm -hmm. um, which for me personally, I was excited to do yeah. because it, feel, it felt like um, while I understand the process, <laughs> I was itching to identify these things so because i feel as though if you if you identify them then that's when you can uh take active steps mm -hmm. forward to res not resolve per se because some things can't be resolved but um at least come up with ideas around how to make things better Absolutely. and that's i feel like what what our goal is is to mm -hmm. help make things better um, yeah. so you know c can you discuss a little bit about that process and um, maybe some of the areas that we've discovered. Sure. So I think, you know, like all of our processes, um, we are doing this, we're having our meetings over Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we're having our group conversations over Zoom. So thank goodness for the experience of the group members and the technology and tech savvy that people have brought, um, such as yourself, because yeah. we can, we were able to do that group brainstorming both around the strengths and then, as you're saying later, around the unmet needs, we were able to do that like on a Google Jamboard, like, you know, just start kind of brainstorming, take a few minutes, put, put down the things that you know from your work in the community, from your perspective, that are not going well right now, that are areas of unmet need, that are areas of challenge. Let's just get them all down. And so that's, I mean, we still, that's a document that's always going to be a workable document, right? A mm -hmm. working uh, thing. But I think with the themes that we found around unmet needs, I think that we are seeing, you know, people feeling like, well, there's kind of an overarching feeling of people wanting to see commitment like on the part of the town government like stated commitment and so we addressed that initially by seeking that uh, a joint statement from the select board and the hrtf so people are wanting to kind of hear from their local officials that they are on board and that they share the same um, desire to see these things which i feel we got i think absolutely if you watch the you know the select board meeting from mm -hmm. was it december 7th that sounds right. <laughs> December, <laughs> December 6th or 7th. 5th, yeah, yeah 5th, right around there. Yeah. Seventh. Um, just check out Westwood Media Center. Uh, mm -hmm. We have all of the recordings of all of our meetings. Um, but yeah, I think we, we got the, um, the reaction that we were hoping for. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, I felt really supported by the select board and I felt like they were excited, you know, um, to have that statement issued. So we were able to do that as kind of a first step towards meeting that the um, stated unmet need of, you know, not having heard, like, from town officials. And so that that was a starting point. So when we started kind of, when we did that brainstorm first as the group and we were looking at those, the unmet needs really fell into some broad categories. So first there was that, you know, um, wanting town officials to acknowledge and affirm their commitment to this um, DEI work and human rights work. And then, and uh, you know, to incorporating those in their policies and practices. Then there was a lot around lack of education and lack of training. So thinking about, you know, how can residents access education and training around human rights issues and um, equity and inclusion, but also how can town officials, like mm -hmm. people who are elected or people who are um, appointed or people who are serving the town, how can they? Um, access, education, and training. And then there was a kind of the theme of celebration and inclusiveness. So how can we celebrate the diversity in our community? How can we um, make sure that this community feels welcoming and inclusive to all, feeling like that it could use work, right? Yes. And speaking yeah. of um, 
procedurally mm. just so that there's an understanding mm. um our charge right now mm -hmm. is to make recommendations so that is maybe a misconception mm. that we um are here to immediately put into action some of the uh, some of the things, and, and sure. we want to. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but we have to follow procedures. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still working out those kinks, I suppose, um, and, and creating these recommendations and what, and what does that look like and how do we present them, Absolutely. I guess. Yeah, I think you and I kind of kicked it off with our, kind of our first recommendation looked like us going to the select board and saying, we recommend that you make a statement, right. like affirming your commitment, right? And so that was, I think, our first formal recommendation, and that that went really well, so I feel like sky's the limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we, I think... There's also, um, you know, we're going to need to gather more data and more information because this is, again, a group of 14 people with diverse perspectives, but just 14 people right. in the community. And, of course, we're not hearing everybody's voices, and we're very conscious of the fact that we need to hear and amplify the voices of groups in town who are not traditionally heard and mm -hmm. not traditionally represented. So we that's what has our group looking at things like an equity audit, kind of following in the steps of the school district as they do an educational equity audit, thinking, okay, how can our town government and our community, how can we gather as much information as possible to really flesh out these unmet needs um, more than we can with 14 people around right. our Zoom. And, you know, I'd, I'd feel awkward if uh, if we didn't um you know I identify that you know today is February 1st yeah and I we haven't seen any communication around Black History Month mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and I think that minimally those are things very low-hanging fruit things mm -hmm. that can be done at the municipal level you know we were talking about Pride Month we've talked about like just recognizing i mean there's it's not there's no um i mean certainly maybe next year or whenever we can the human rights task force will recommend that we do have events mm -hmm. uh, centered around these celebrations right but minimally you know having a message come across um from the municipality just that we're gonna we're gonna recognize it we're gonna celebrate and we we love everyone you know Absolutely, that yeah. kind of thing um so hopefully we can move forward on on those kinds of things um as we kind of wrap up our first ever episode mm -hmm. um i looked up a quick quote mm, <laughs> that i, I did that i didn't run by you yet but i'm gonna <laughs> say it anyway it's exciting um in honor of black history month and uh the recent um the recent uh martin luther king day um <laughs> a, a martin luther king jr once said a right delayed is a right denied and it's something to think about. I mean, as we know all these things take time, mm. <laughs> but certainly as we move closer, it feels just so much better to be putting in this type of work personally. Absolutely. I appreciate that quote, and I appreciate, you know, being able to kick this off with, you know, in a kind of constant attempt, I think, on our parts to bring this work out into the community because I think you're right. Like the longer things take, like it's not that nothing's happening during that passage of time. Like people are not having their needs met right. during that passage of time. And knowing that there is, you know, what the Westwood community is all about, the same reasons that you decided to move here and to work here, the same reasons I've decided to work here all these years are because I really think that all of these things are in line with the values of the community. Um, and this is just like the next step that people need to take. And so doing things like this, you know, um, being a part of this group feels really important so that we're not delaying, that we're right. able to move things forward. Thanks, Melinda. Yeah. Um, so just so that our audience knows, um, we will continue with our episodes of this podcast and uh, we will be in contact about, or at least on our podcast to tell you how to be in contact with us um, and how to interact because we certainly want to hear from the community. Um, and we'll give you that information on our uh, upcoming episodes. So thank you again for listening. Thanks everybody.